The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. Morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It is Wednesday, the 24th of November, and you are on the clock with Erin Green. And we open the show with uh, one of the, I think, one of the best songs by uh, Pat Ramming ever written or performed. Um, and I played that in honor of my good friend, Margot Blackwell former lecturer at College of the Bahamas and University of the Bahamas and in Bahamas Environmental Research Center in North Andrus. Happy birthday, Margot Blackwell. I had to play that song for Margot because Margot is the person who brought that song to my attention, and I love it. I also want to say happy birthday to Pia Farmer, to Nicholas Johnson, to Fred Cronrad, Cronard, and to Lisa Lana, my good, good cousin, who stay trying to get me to run and exercise and be healthy. And I keep telling the boy, if it's one fight, I can fight. I can keep up the good fight. And not <laughs> run, run. Ah, oh, boy. Anyway, to my good marathon running cousin, Lisa Lana, happy, happy birthday. She's taking it upon herself to keep the hasty family together. And I thank her for that. And to Pat Ramming, I want to say thank you for that song. And I'm going to remind the audience uh, definitely tomorrow. I don't have the details on me today. But uh, Voices Across the Diaspora is a poetry event being put on by the University of the Bahamas on Friday. I think Friday night this week. And it should be great. But I'll have the details for that tomorrow. So good morning. Pat Ramming. Today is a What's in the News uh, Wednesday, so if you want to join the conversation, you can text us on the Guardian Radio text line. That's 422-GR96 or 422-4796. That's powered by BTC. Standard text rate 316 or 325-4259. Now, what I want to do is I want to get back into the uh, Paradise Island Lighthouse Royal Caribbean Cruise discussion that we had yesterday because I will acknowledge that I, you know, there's still some more points that need to be made. We could flesh that out a bit more, and I want to do that. Uh, but before that, I want to say or to remind you that the women, the Women United March and Rally to stop the abuse of our women and children is uh, taking place right now. On my way into the station, I passed the women marching from Fort Charlotte to Rawson Square. And uh, the organizers will be in Rawson Square all day until 4 p.m. So please join them, lend your support to this initiative by coming out and standing with them as they take a stand against violence against women and children. And to I encourage you to support Zonta's 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence. Let me get into it a little bit later. I want to ask you guys, are you, did you join the march? Because I think they've already reached Rawson Square. Are you going to attend the rally? And then some more important questions. Do you think a march will impact government and state actors, society at large, or perpetrators of violence? Should employers give staff time off to attend the rally? 
maybe give them an extra 15 minutes, 20 minutes, so they could go get their lunch and then go sit in Rawson Square, socially distance, of course, or pass through as they're eating their lunch. And do the, does the public sector and private sector understand the extent to which their actions and policies can contribute to the reduction of intimate partner violence, domestic violence, sexual harassment, sexual assault, and rape. And I'm talking about uh, policies like flexi time, ensuring that uh, your staff is getting a decent wage so that they could afford decent and adequate housing. There are all kinds of ways that the public sector and the private sector can contribute to the reduction of IPV, that's intimate partner violence, GBV, that's gender-based violence, DV, that's domestic violence, sexual harassment, assault, and rape. And see, the GBV, the IPV, the DV, the sexual harassment, the assault, and the rape, men experience those as well. Looking at a text here. Great show as usual, Ms. Green. You hear this foolishness, BPL proposing. They, okay trying to put prepaid meter box in the Bahamas, but I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. So BPL is proposing prepaid meter boxes. Okay. What BPL should try and do is figure out how to balance their salaries with the actual production of reasonably priced electricity. Yeah, that's what we need to focus on. We need to focus on ending the energy crisis and bringing the cost of electricity down to something sensible as opposed to waking up. Like one of my biggest nightmares growing up as a child, I used to wake up and, and I, in my dream as a homeowner and I was at the, either at the bank or, or BC or something trying to pay my bill and the bill was the same as the mortgage on the house. It's like a nightmare. I don't understand. I mean, I say thank God or bless the parents who, who could, who worked hard to make sure that the children had the basic, which is electricity, and bless the parents who, no matter how hard they worked, they just couldn't afford it. All right. So Royal Caribbean Cruise Line deal, and I really have to get into this because I feel like maybe, maybe I did the discussion the discourse itself, maybe I did the discussion a disservice by not fleshing out all of the issues involved. Because you see, I'm an anti-imperialist, anti-capitalist, intersectional human rights advocate. So when I see things like uh, a corporation being granted the option for a 150-year lease, but a Bahamian in the same voice, saying that in, even though they were, or they thought that they had acquired possession of some of the land involved, that they only get a 21-year lease with just one extension. See, it's things like that that make me question what's happening. But, 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 as an advocate, I have a rule. When you can't beat them, and you don't want to join them, and you can't even make them obsolete. Well, you have to figure out how to use them to your own advantage. And it's as simple as that. And it's the same argument that I've had with the mega resorts for years, right? You got an Atlantis, you got a Bahama, all-inclusive, encouraging their guests to stay on site and to take advantage solely of the activities prepared for them 
on site. And I say, if that's what the big hotel want to do on my land or with my concessions in my ocean and my fish in the ocean, I mean, if that's what they want to do, I guess, and my sand, I can't really stop them because it's just me one. But here's what I could do. You see, no, air, uh, no mega resort is uh, teleporting their clients directly to the hotel. Ain't nobody flying in from Miami or, or, or Fort Lauderdale or Europe and going straight to the hotel and landing on their property and deplaning there. That isn't happening. So, as long as that tourist lands at an airport and has to drive from the airport to that mega resort, that's my opportunity to grab their attention. And since the Ministry of Tourism and the mega resorts strategy is you bring them in the first time and treat them sweet so they may so that the next time is every time if that first experience is so sweet the bahamas will be their staycation they stay coming to the bahamas so that's what i'm going to do i let the hotel bring them let the hotel not the ministry of tourism no, no, not the Ministry of Tourism, not the government, not taxpayer dollars. Let the hotels bring them in. Let the hotels market. Let the hotels advertise. Let the hotels refuse the concessions from the government because they don't really need it. You do the work of bringing them here. And I'll le even let you have the audacity of suggesting that they shouldn't go anywhere but your compound. I let you do that because... From the airport to your hotel, from your hotel back to the airport, they mine. I have all the opportunity in the world to grab their attention and show them what it is they can do if they come off the compound or what they can do on their second trip. And they don't have to include a mega resort. But if you want to stay there, that's fine. Because now you know exactly where you're going when you leave their property. So when you can't beat them and you don't want to join them, you can't even make them obsolete. You have to figure out how to use them or work with them to your own advantage. So let's get into the critique. That's the first thing. The second thing is this. While I think that the deal is outrageous, apparently it is not irregular. Similar deals with leases extending up to and over 100 years are not unheard of, the Bahamian government. Now, that's not to say that that is a standard or a practice that we should uphold or maintain or sustain. I'm just saying that it is not irregular or unheard of to grant a lease for that or an op lease option for that amount of time. Good morning, Grand Bahama Port Authority. Another point to make is that the cruise line's lease will amount to approximately $20,000 per acre per year. My math is correct. Roughly $20,000 per acre per year. The cost for Bahamians, and if you know the, if I'm incorrect, please correct me, is between roughly $50 and $100 per year per acre, or per acre per year. So that's a big difference. That's a massive difference. I still don't think it's enough. I mean, the land on PI is so pristine that people keep trying to keep Bahamians off of it. So it'd have to be super valuable so valuable that you would prevent citizens from accessing it? Got to be super valuable. Got to be worth more than $20,000 per acre per year. And so then we have to ask the question, what are the collective gains for country and the individual citizen with Toby Smith's project versus the cruise lines project? And I'm going to stick a pin there. I got some callers on the line. Caller, you're on the clock. Aaron Green. Hi, good morning. Aaron Green. Yes. I, I got the gist of the point, right? But the point is that at a power on it is priceless. Like, Google Gilbert Law, our dealer, it's not a four-acre 
that man house burnt down, the profits he sold was 16 million. Nicholas Scarlett was worth 30 million. It's Gemini Daddy Fly Guy. It was worth 20 million. Harry Potter, um, so it's your house. I don't know what this for, but, but the cruise lines book men spent about a hundred million dollars or more for that piece of land right there. The royal fee for this, for an hour and a half should be about a million dollars, and every year five percent more. We can be big enough to hire a hundred dollars rent for a half for one hundred years, but how did you get that quick? And it doesn't make no sense. I uh, got you. Because uh, is this, is this, is this, is this, try to avoid, well, if the cruise, the cruise line goes by what? Ah, well, thank you. Look here. I, I have a rule. And my rule is, sure, if you want to buy it, you can buy it. I can't imagine the size jitney you're going to need to take it home with you, though, when you leave. Right? Got another caller. Caller, you're on the clock. Call it, it is talking a voice along with you, Aaron. Good, Good morning, like Brayman. How are you? I'm morning. Bless. You, you are a sensible woman, and you speak sense. But a couple of things I want to say, right? Yes, sir. Number one, uh... We should be taking our money and marketing those hotels. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay? Other point is, when it comes to uh, B BPL, we build that. Uh, but I remember also when we used to have to put the, the uh, six penny, mm -hmm. the round six pence, in the meters when I was a young boy growing up. Uh, so they had changed that. So it's not the first time. But what I also want to say... We build it to what it is today, so they are talking foolishness, especially when they let the hotel owe us millions of dollars and get away with it. Oh, yeah. Oh, Thank yeah. Thank you for your time. Absolutely, Bremen. Thank you. Yeah. And so one of the questions Bahamians have been asking consistently is, are the concessions and the trade-offs worth it? Right? Why is it that Bahamians are paying for tourists to come to the Bahamas? Why am I incentivizing the tourists' trip? The taxpayer, why are we incentivizing the tourists' trip? And is that bringing us value for money? And that's the same question we have to ask in the Toby, in, in, in the Lighthouse Point Royal Caribbean saga. What are the collective gains for country and individual citizen with each project? Because uh, if the benefits don't pour down to the average citizen, not trickle, but pour down to the average citizen, then maybe it's not worth it. And there's a very big question here. And, and, and sorry, in that previous question, we're talking about jobs. We're talking about systems as well, though. You see, because a job is one thing, but if jobs are managed properly, then jobs are contained within systems that transfer knowledge and skill sets, right? And if you have a properly functioning system that contains jobs, and that system transfers knowledge and skill sets, right, then you have something more than just jobs. You have, a, you have something that's sustainable. And so we don't just want jobs. We don't just want employment. It's far more complex than that. I got to ask this, just this one quick question, and I'm coming to you, Carla. Another question we have to ask is, who is in a better position to protect and preserve the lighthouse? Get back to that question. Good morning, caller. You're on the clock. Aaron, how are you doing? Good, thank you. How are you? Uh, you know, I can't see for the life of me, as Bahamians, we say we go to the polls roughly every five years to elect a group of men and women to look out for our best interests. Mm -hmm. I, need, I need us to ask ourselves, when was the last time that we elected a group of men and women who looked out for the best interest of the Bohemian people. I don't understand that. Can you explain that to me, please? How could you sit down and say, guess what? I'm voting with these guys because they got our best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. It's, um, 
you know, prior to the 2021 election, I would have told you that one of the differences I see between the PLP and the FNM, it's as if the FNM can't see the people for the country, if that's how you phrase it. Like, they could see the country, they could see the economy, they could see statistics, but it's like they can't see people. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. How could you then say, okay, we've been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We say we need change. Change basically was presented before us. And this election gone, we had more people run and more parties run in the history of the country. But yet, we're saying that these people that we elected right now or before that had our best interests at heart? No, no. And that, and, and, but at this point, in this 2021 election, we know that Bahamians weren't voting on the grounds of who we think have the, uh, the people's best interests at heart. Why not? Because they're in dire straits. You see, I love when the uh, electorate, when the, it expanded by the inclusion of more parties, right? But the truth is, it, it wasn't expanded with the inclusion of more ideas. It wasn't expanded with the inclusion of more political theory, like different types of politics and, and, and different types of ideas. That didn't happen. Okay, one more thing. Yeah, yeah. One more thing. I'm going to keep you up. Keep you tight if you want. I have no problem with the meters because I do agree. If, if, if you got a cell phone and you can't afford it, buddy, put it aside. No, man. I, I, I agree. I feel you. That's a, a serious economic point. But this country, this government... I come into you right now at the caller, don't go nowhere. This country, this government, they have an obligation to the people to provide basic electricity. This ain't no other regular matter. This is an irregular matter. And the people responsible know. See, because when they go to bed at night, in their nice comfy bed, and they ain't worried about the power go off, something is go to bed with them, and that's called guilt. They know the extent to which the energy crisis has negatively impacted and disrupted the lives of people, not just Bahamians, people in this country. That ain't just a regular dysfunction. That's an irregular dysfunction. Because I-45, and there's no way executives at BPL should be arguing over contracts and, and the, what they're worth, given the lack of quality of the product that they're getting paid to deliver. Anyway, call you on the clock. Well, good morning, Aaron. It may have been the people's time, but it, it wasn't about Toby's future, was it? Oh, boy. <laughs> you like how I put those two slogans together? <laughs> but you're on point today. I think in the infinite wisdom, one of our former rulers may have given a 150-year agreement on that parcel if for no other reason, just to make Freeport people feel good about their 99-year lease that has oppressed them. Uh -huh. Have we not learned anything from what happened in Freeport? And we're systematically displacing our people. You know, if we would have started 25 years ago putting solar on every rooftop in this country, I dare say that most of the people whose lights are off today we have thousands of people whose lights off today. Mm -hmm. That's a serious, serious thing, uh, Aaron, because we're talking about distance education on a tablet. Yep. Or a laptop. Yep. You want to drop the Sorry, sorry go on. If the majority of the poor can't afford the laptop, or if they have one by some act of God, they can't turn it on because they don't have light. Mm -hmm. And we have all this sun. You know what's really funny? We're contemplating um, making a gentleman the leader of a party who's a cowboy shower. I wouldn't call any names, but that is pathetic. We have sun outside, and we refuse to bring that in to heat our hot water heater. Absolutely. It's as simple as that. You put something on your roof that takes the sun's heat, electricity, and puts it in your water heater for free. We should never have a cowboy shower. Absolutely. And watch this. They're saying that we need to lower our electricity costs by a third. Just heating hot water in this country would lower our electricity costs by a third. And we spend $400 million a year on fuel to run in generators to heat water. But yet we're in the United Nations, Scotland, France, Copenhagen. And they should be laughing at us. How can you be over there talking about the water is rising in Andrus, killing all the lovely <clears throat> plants? 
you over here burning diesel in Bunker C. That's yeah. why India and China said, ha-ha, and left, because they knew it was a mockery. So I don't know what you're going to do, but it's really sad that Bahamians now will have to choose if they're going to get a cruise, take the cruise, come from Miami to the Bahamas to go see their beach on the back of Paradise Island. That's something, mate. Thank you very that's, much. Thank that's you. a displacement, isn't it? Oh, boy. Thank you very much, Graham. I got to go. I got to go to a break. But that's the point right there. Imagine that there are beaches in my own country that I cannot access unless I pay a company and leave this jurisdiction to re-enter it via the company's transport. That's sub May. It just don't make sense. Anyway, I'm well overdue on my break. We get back from the break. I'm going to get to these texts. We're going to continue this discussion. It's an important one. Stay tuned to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. We'll be right back on the clock. At Fidelity, the holidays are all about family, spending time with loved ones, and being thankful for the little things in life. Worrying about bills should be the last thing on your mind, especially during the holidays. Let Fidelity help you get your bills under control. Fidelity can also get you started with a real savings plan that actually pays you interest. The only thing you need to think about is what you will do with the savings in your pocket this Christmas. Now that's what I'm talking about. Fidelity Bank is here for you this holiday season because you are family, and family is important to us. Here we go. J. Good morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. It is Wednesday, the 24th of November, and you're on the clock with Aaron Green. Now, I'm going to give this just a little bit more time, and I can tell you why. Because when I left the show yesterday, I felt like, uh, you know, I, I was slapping up a little bit, you know? I, I think there were some important points made, but I also need to be fair and sort of balance and bring other elements of the discussion in because uh, as an advocate, I have to tell uh, sort of corporations and businesses and, and, and entities that I interact with all the time while I'm trying to encourage or evoke a shift in your culture, your, whatever the services you provide in that particular company culture, I also recognize that I alone can't provide that service. And so my intent is not to destroy or disrupt, but to encourage to shift, Right. And that's what we're trying to do here. And so the last question I had was, who is in a better position to protect and preserve the lighthouse? Right? I wanted to ask, why wasn't the lighthouse? I don't think it is. Or maybe lighthouses are registered in a different way. I was going to ask the question, is the lighthouse registered as a national mon monument? Who will have oversight of the lighthouse who will be in control of it, who will be responsible for managing it. Um, and I think these are important questions um, in terms of the upkeep and management of the lighthouse. Who will have access to it? All important questions that have to be answered. And before we get past this, there's just a couple of more questions. This is, a, I think, one of the most important ones. Are Bahamians prepared to invest in creating businesses or ventures of this magnitude, right? Because if we had done something, if we were prepared to do something, there's no way the cruise line could come in because we would already be doing something of that magnitude with the land, right? Uh, that's an important question. And here's the second part of this question, and I think this is why it's important. Is the government interested in Bahamians creating or investing in a, creating a venture of that magnitude? 
right? Because I get the impression that there's tension within the government itself, like policy-wise. Do we focus on bohemianization and investing the resources necessary to encourage the development of industries and entities on the scale, or the same scale or magnitude as our neighbors and partners to the north? Or is the government more focused on encouraging industry and investment that requires minimal work on their behalf and results in the collection of maximum ta resources through taxes with that minimal, compared to the minimal work required? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Is our government prepared to support that type of local development? Got a caller on the line? Caller, you're on the clock. There is Greg. Hi, good morning. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, man. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. When, when, when should I show up for a plate? Well, I ain't looking for a plate for them. Okay, uh, good, good. Time I was fortunate to have five plates brought to my house one time by my good friend. Well, I, I well, I was about to so say... I hope, I, I hope I be lucky guy this year. Okay. I was about to say, I can't drop off a plate if I don't know where you live. But the truth is, I can't teeth a plate if I don't know where you live either. So find a balance. Oh, Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that part could be solved anytime, any hour, any second. All right. But, um, on a more sober note, um, mm -hmm. you mentioned a little bit of politics. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Something you touch on um, struck my mind to call. Mm hmm. I think that was dealing with the FNF. Um, today, I'm talking about Royal Caribbean Cruise Line deal. I, uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about the FNM leadership race, election coming. Well, let's touch on that Royal deal. Yeah. Um, um, the deal was not, well, we all know the deal was not made by the present government. Mm -hmm. And the question is, would they give the same um, deal by the former government? Mm -hmm. But that's a... Uh, Wow, you give it, what, 15 years? The initial lease is 25, and then you have the option for four extensions that would result in 150. Yeah, that's a bypass in your great, 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 great grandchildren. Not, don't listen, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that I practice Obeah, but there's a good chance I may still be here. <laughs> well, yeah, you got to here. Long life, but well, when you, I mean, I mean... Yeah, it's this. See, this type of deal. What 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 concerns me about a hundred and fifty year lease is that politically, like socially, culturally, we don't have the culture necessary to be able to operate with them things. We could barely remember what was said last week. Half the people don't forget. Minister said that he was going to tell us what was in the Oban file. Yeah, the question. Why do we join political parties? Ah, oh, boy. And when, when, when we when join them, what is the purpose and what is the, the mean? Well, listen, I got I to gotta go. We can get into that question tomorrow. Thank you uh, for letting I'm going to ask that question in your honor to my guests tomorrow because um, that's a good one. That's a good one right there. Because at the end of the day, that's a part of our problem. Do people understand why they're joining these parties and how their participation in these party mechanisms impact the greater public? It's an important question. Anyway, call or hold the line. I got to go to another break. Stay tuned to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. We will be right back. And then I think I get one or two more questions about Royal Caribbean that have to be asked before any more slapping up could take place. Stay tuned. Guardian Radio, 96.9.
Food security is a challenge for many. Now in a pandemic, many more are unsure of their next meal. Through their Feed 5000 program and a $20,000 donation, AML is working to ensure that everyone has a meal for the holidays, and they're inviting you to help. Now until December 17th, visit any Solomon's, Costrite, Fresh Market, or Domino's in Nassau or Freeport, and Exuma Markets in Georgetown to donate and help feed a family in need this Christmas. No amount is too small. Remember, we're all in this together. At Fidelity, the holidays are all about family, spending time with loved ones, and being thankful for the little things in life. Worrying about bills should be the last thing on your mind, especially during the holidays. Let Fidelity help you get your bills under control. Fidelity can also get you started with a real savings plan that actually pays you interest. The only thing you need to think about is what you will do with the savings in your pocket this Christmas. Now that's what I'm talking about. Fidelity Bank is here for you this holiday season because you are family and family is important to us. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Good morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Okay, so we're moving along. Uh, my text has told me that Toby, well, that uh, Lighthouse Point Toby Smith would have management over the lighthouse. Now, you see, Toby, this is where this, sometimes you got to work alongside them because if the government grants the cruise ship land, particularly land that was already promised or possibly, possibly given to you already, right? Um, then maybe the cruise line should bear some responsibility, finance-wise, finance-wise, for maintaining the lighthouse. But the point is this, there are all kinds of ways that we can negotiate these things, right? Now, the last point I want to make about this deal, I still got to do a little more research, right? But if the lighthouse deal, like that land deal, was contingent on the purchase of the Grand Lucayan, then maybe I could see why this lease for the lighthouse deal looks so sweet because you're trying to encourage them to do a thing and meld something, you know? I, I could appreciate that. I could appreciate that. You know, I'm not a capitalist, but I understand capitalist negotiations. And so this whole list of questions was to, um, to, to, to interrogate the issue a bit more. And not just the surface issues that should be enough. But more importantly, I wanted to get a sense of why the government would make these decisions. Right? Why they would make these decisions. And when you understand why they would make these decisions, then you are in a better position to help them not have to make these decisions. I'm sorry about that, caller. Please call back. Let's get to these texts because I got to make mention of this headline in The Guardian today. New push to end shanty towns. Plus, we can't forget there's the... Uh, March to Stop the Abuse of Our Women and Children and Rally taking place right now. Tomorrow is the beginning of 16 days of activism to end a violence against women and children and gender-based violence. I wanted to talk a bit about marital rape, and I wanted to touch a bit about that video um, that we saw this week. But let me get to the text line. Also, Texas says, I was in the store yesterday and I saw a lady pick up about 30 uh, small noodle pack 
three for a dollar. That means that the USA has them for 30 for 50 cents. Question, what are those noodles made of? I think it's poor quality. I don't think they could be good for the body. Why are the food stores selling these things? And a particular, particular store has them stored with non, not just non-edible items, but uh, with animal repellent. Anyway, that's why we need labs. That's why we need mechanisms. That's why we need institutions. We, the people, need to construct these things. We can't wait on the government to create a mechanism to ensure the quality of goods being imported. We need to build that mechanism and then connect with the government. That's how it's going to have to be, people. Another text says, so Aaron, did Toby get straight? And how would you grab the tourists between the hotel and airport? You will be a roadside vendor aid. The taxis still have to stop. Well, first of all, what you do is you grab them with billboards and, and advertisements and activities, right? Ain't nothing. When I'm traveling, when I travel, the first thing I do is I try to get the window seat. So on the ride from the airport where we go and I could see everything. I want to see what's out there. I want to see what's available. And if I see other people already doing the thing, they're going to draw me to it even more. And so when they're on their ride back to the airport and they're passing those things again, they're going to be like, oh, my goodness, we didn't even, I forgot about that. I had such a great time in the hotel. I forgot about all the fabulous things I could do outside of the hotel. We got to come back for another trip. And then what you do is you make sure that your taxi drivers have the cards, your adver small advertisements for those events. So when the tourists get out the taxi, they have your contact information in hand. We could get strategic, you know, but you're going to have to pay me a little something, something for the rest. Caller, you're on the clock. Hey, morning, Aaron. What's up? Everything's good. How you do? I am great, man. Um... Is this an open line, or are you talking about something in, in particular? Well, we're talking about the cruise line deal. We're talking about, and some of the tourist-related issues around it. Uh, tourism, sorry, tourism-related. We're talking a bit about Women United, and I wanted to talk about this uh, shanty town, the new push to end shanty towns. Um, I, I heard you mention something about the uh, video. Um, Aaron. Yeah. Um, you, could you recall... Um, the little um, girl who got um, killed. You mean um, um, the baby? I think. Baby what, what's Bella? This the same, I think it was a day after, something like that. I think Vaughn had a talk show, mm -hmm. and he had a caller call in, mm -hmm. and the caller was trying to, like, pry things out of him to say. So I called, mm -hmm. and, and I told Vaughn, um, remember, that you 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 are a talk show host. Uh -huh. You have you have a platform, and remember when you decide to talk about cases, what hasn't been basically before the court or whatever on the radio. Mm -hmm. um, you got to be very careful, and and you got some people in this country, Aaron. They will call your talk show, mm -hmm. and they will try to start Aaron up to talk about things with Aaron Easy. Mm -hmm. You see, but at the end of the day, when when the people them say that um it's a prejudice because they talk about a case what 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 what, what didn't even go before the basically before the courts yet, um that could cause problems to you. Right, absolutely, and in fact, you know what I said to the caller day I think day before yesterday or yesterday was yesterday. We, yeah, we, we, yesterday. we can't even determine whether a stabbing took place from the see? images in the video themselves. And we got to be careful. We say we want justice. We say we want to do the right thing for the victim. But sometimes doing the right thing, thing for the victim is, is staying silent and moderating ourselves until we get sufficient information to move forward. I want to thank you, DeWitt. I want to thank you for that, for that word. It's a, it's, a, it's a thin line, you see. It's a, it's a balance to be found. We often uh, we cuss off the person who recorded the incident, right? But then when there is no camera, there is no evidence to take to the court to say plainly what happened, we hang our heads and say, oh boy, it's a shame. 
we don't have what we need to convict this person. And so it's not a question of whether, you know, well, if no one should record, it is, are people prepared to step in and do what's needed in the moment? And are people even aware of what's needed? Can they determine what's needed in the moment? You know someone is recording, the rest of y'all go stop the fight. People stop trying to break up fights because they, they get stabbed up and almost killed trying to break up the fight. I know a guy, he tried to stop a fight. He get locked up. He get locked up. He going to stop two family members from fighting and they look like they was going to stab each other to death. And he got locked up because they tried press charges on him. And he legit was trying to stop two people who say they was going to kill each other from killing each other. So we have to practice moderation. And there are things we share in semi-private, right, or semi-public spaces, but know that when you go on the radio, you can't say something that may potentially jeopardize the case. Thank you again for that, DeWitt. Another text, good day. If deals like RCL and Bahama were so good, why do the politicians not table it and brag about the signing? Why do they go to a court to hide the details? Why can't we lease for the real value of the land? This investment will bring, will they bring in everything duty free to build? 10 years down the road, this investor will be running circles around us, bringing in foreigners to work in the government will turn a blind eye. Big land grab at the expense of a Bahamian investor, sickening. But we have to make sure that the government does its job. You see, this shantytown issue, somebody asked me if I think this is just a big distraction. There is a distraction involved, you know. But there's what the distraction is. Would you believe that the government has some responsibility for housing for documented migrants, for migrants, right? Like if you come here on a work permit, the government must ensure that your employer is ensuring that you have access to safe, adequate, affordable, and government-approved housing? Did you know that? Complicit in this whole thing is the government? That this could not have happened if the government in its various functions and agencies were doing, was doing its job? I think that's a part of the distraction, but we're going to get to that in a moment. Got to get to these texts, another text. Good show, Ms. Green. I believe we are at a crossroad for a while now to diversify, diversify, diversify. As we've been talking long time now, as previous caller Graham said, go solo, and what or who's stopping us? Are we not a sunny nation filled with many other natural resources? Look here, from, from the scientists tell me that the tide is rising, sea levels are rising, then I'm thinking, why are we not focused on uh, hydro, tidal, energy production? Another text, I lives on Andros and had a tankless heater for the past 15 years. It only comes on when I turn on the hot water. Forest. It saves energy. Yep. Thank you for that. That's experience speaking for you. Aaron, the property with the cruise line bought, Gilbert Lloyd, I guess, owned it. It has a gunpowder room or cave from the pirate days. Aaron, big money has already been spent. That crown land should lease for a million dollars a year with 5% extra every year because price of land doesn't stay the same, it goes up. We, uh, got, we have a bad deal. Now, you say from a billion dollar company. I'm not going to say it's from them. I can say with a billion dollar company. It's our government we looking at first to blame. Also, why is this house not registered under the Monuments Act? I almost believe you're not registering these things under the Monuments Act so that you could take advantage of their economic value in a personal, less structural, less share amongst the people way. Caller, you on the clock. We got 60 seconds. 
Hey, Aaron, I had to call back. Yeah. How do we make money from this new deal with the new port and with the beach being leased? If the cruise ship people only come off, stay in the port, or go on a tender over to that beach, and the money stays with the cruise ship, how do we, the people, make big money from this deal? Well, this is it. How does the how how does the benefit? How does the money trickle down to the Bahamian people? You realize you realize before independence, Sir Stafford Sands said that whole boat has to close down, and you must go over the hill to eat. Yeah. The entertainment. Yep. No food on the boat. You close. No casino. No food, and no entertainment. And look what we've done. It's a private island sitting in the middle of your harbor. Most people, 80%, don't even get off the boat. Now, look here, Graham. I get, I get, look here. I got to go. You, I, I got to go. I got to close yeah. out the show. You just put in interesting revolutionary thoughts in my mind because I, just, I just saw just now, it looked like we're going to have to have a flotilla of uh, vendors on the path from the cruise ship to the island. Right? Because it would be a disgrace if they never get to see the people on the land same time. It would just be a disgrace if they didn't get to see us on the land same time. But these things could work. We could work with each other and not against each other. All right. Got to go. Going to read out these last texts. Aragonite, Oban, now 150-year lease. Remember, I don't think this is the first 150-year lease. These foreign investors putting... Um, no. They're not doing that. We're just bad negotiators because we don't see our true value because we don't believe in things like Chick Chani and Jack and things. If we believe in them things, then we believe in ourselves more. It says, sound like you siding with RCL. Listen, I appreciate that. The cruise line. Is it that cruise line made Erin Brown the godmother of the seas, of the ship? Like, I appreciate their attempts to wake with us. I ain't even mad at them at this point. I'm talking to my own government about its inability to rationalize Bahamians as a priority in their wake. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway, another text. I got you. One more, couple more texts. You still ain't answer my question, though. Did Toby get straight or not? What are the details? I think the matter is still in court. I, still be th I, th I think we're still waiting for the courts to determine, right, the status of the contracts. But at the end of the day, I think they're going to pay Toby out. But I ain't no lawyer, and I definitely ain't no judge. Says, why not record something that will be useful? Don't government have CCTV cameras up to record? I'm not sure what you're talking about, Aaron. That's how it's supposed to be, with, with the exception of a few talk show hosts and media people. Everyone was talking about homeboy sexually abusing Bella before any official info was given. And we still assume he alone hurt her without proof. Uh, right. That's why it's so important to moderate our speech in the public domain. Last text, and I'm running out of here. So Aaron, legally, if the government is doing its job, there shouldn't be any shanty towns in the Bahamas because everyone on work permit, the employer is responsible for their housing accommodation. And the government is responsible to govern the employer and make sure it happens. Anyway, we get into that and even more tomorrow. We're talking FNM leadership race. Gotta go, Bahamas. It's been a pleasure. Have a great day, and I know you will, because Levon Miller and Unleashed is up next. Happy birthday to all my peoples. Have a great day, Bahamas. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.